In today's video, I'm going to talk about the skincare habits that have genuinely changed my skin for the better. But this isn't your usual run-of-the-mill skincare approach. I will be mentioning some skincare products, of course, but I'm also going to talk about what I do very intentionally to look after my skin from the inside out. Because the science is unequivocal at this point. If you are serious about changing or enhancing your skin naturally, you have to go at it from both angles. A quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona. I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. I specialize in skin health and on this channel we talk about nutritional skincare, which might give you some clues about what the rest of this video is about. So before we get into this, let me set the scene a little bit. So I have combination skin, so I have quite an oily T-zone and my my cheeks can be prone to a bit of dryness. I have naturally very acne prone skin, annoyingly, but I know how to manage it. And I am firmly in my mid thirties, which means I have the first signs of aging creeping in that I am desperately trying to keep at bay. So that is what all these skincare approaches are targeting. And I will talk you through the details as we go through. So let's get into them in no particular order. Here are the five skincare habits that have genuinely changed my skin for the better. Number one is using vitamin C serum. So vitamin C is actually one of the few skincare ingredients that actually have a lot of research behind them. And if you've watched this channel enough, you will know how I like my evidence. Now vitamin C generally crops up in skincare as ascorbic acid, and it's known for brightening the skin, reducing hyperpigmentation, it has a gently anti-aging effect, and it can help mop up some of the damage caused by the sun. But I actually use this vitamin C product. The lights might be washing it out, but I'll flash up a separate image too but anyway it's mad hippies vitamin c serum and this one has vitamin c in the form of sodium ascorbyl phosphate now the reason i chose this one is because along with the other benefits i just mentioned the form of vitamin c as sodium ascorbyl phosphate also has an anti-acne effect and i do find that since using this i have just noticed that my skin has been brighter and also consistently clearer now i apply it in the morning before moisturizer so i can also make best use of the uv dampening effect as well. Number two is eating protein for breakfast. Now I know what you're thinking, what an earth does this have to do with skincare? Let me enlighten you. So protein foods are things like meat, fish, dairy, eggs, tofu, nuts and seeds and pulses and legumes. Research shows that when we eat a good amount of protein for breakfast it helps to stabilize our blood sugar for the rest of the day and stable blood sugar helps to keep hormones in check and stable hormones affect everything from how clear your skin is to how quickly it ages. So in the short term eating protein for breakfast helps me to keep my skin clear. In the longer term eating protein for breakfast is going to help me stay looking younger for longer. Now in practice this means I often have eggs for breakfast with some seedy toast and cooked tomatoes for example. Now for my clients who tolerate dairy another good option is Greek yogurt which is rich in protein served with some nuts and some berries and for my plant-based clients I often recommend chia seed pudding which again is rich in fiber and protein. Because focusing on protein at breakfast stabilizes your blood sugar it also helps to regulate your appetite. So what that means is that if you eat protein for breakfast you will be much less inclined to reach for that sugar cookie come three o'clock. Experiment with this and try it for yourself. You will be amazed by the effect it has on your skin and on the effect it has on how you feed yourself as the day unfolds. <coughs> Habit number three is cleansing with squalene oil. Now I have stopped using anything that's foaming or sudsy and the effect has been transformative. This is all to do with skin pH. So point one in this revelation is that our skin has a naturally acidic pH. And the trouble with most soapy or sudsy or foaming cleansers is that they have an alkaline pH. Now that pushes the pH of your skin up after every use. And if you keep using them over the long term, it's going to fundamentally change the pH of your skin so it's that much higher. That leads me to point two of this revelation, which is that the more acidic your skin, 
the more slowly it ages. And on the flip side, the less acidic your skin, the more signs of aging show up. Once I'd done a deep dive into this research, I cut out anything remotely sudsy or foaming or alkaline or soap based. So in the morning, I simply splashed my face with lukewarm water. And in the evening, I used this, the Ordinary Squalene Oil. Now I like squalene oil because it mimics a natural oil found on our skin and it doesn't disrupt skin pH. But to be honest, any oil, because they don't contain water, they don't influence skin pH. So you can choose any oil that you like really. I use this one along with a soft cloth and I find that it gets off makeup really well. And I've honestly been amazed by the difference this has made. So these smile lines here, they used to go much further down my face, but since cutting out foaming cleansers and just using an oil instead, I swear these have got both shallower and shorter and my skin just feels less dry. Now this might also be related to habit four, which is eating nuts daily and oily fish weekly. So as mentioned, I have an oily T-zone, but I'm prone to dryness on my cheeks and actually on the rest of my body. Most people think that you just have to drink a lot of water to help your skin stay hydrated, but that's only actually half the story. For your skin to stay hydrated, it needs to be able to hold on to water. And that has a lot more to do with the nutrients that you eat that build up a strong skin barrier. So for months now, I've been focusing on eating a couple of handfuls of nuts a day, which contain healthy omega-6 fats, which play a key role in your skin barrier function. I often go for almonds just because those have been shown to have a specific anti-wrinkle effect. I've done a video on that, which I will link up here for you. But I also like pecans and walnuts too. Now I've also been eating oily fish twice a week, pretty religiously. That's things like salmon and mackerel and sardines. Now these contain the healthy omega-3 fats, which as well as contributing to a strong skin barrier, also have an anti-inflammatory effect. Eating oily fish twice a week is nothing groundbreaking. And actually most national food bodies recommend that we all eat fish twice a week. It's just easy not to do it. But I've really been focusing on getting my oily fish in. And I actually find that canned fish can be really helpful here because it's an easy and inexpensive way to get the oily fish in. Now what I've noticed since focusing on eating nuts daily and oily fish twice weekly is that my skin is more hydrated. And actually my litmus test is my elbows. I noticed that if they get a little bit rough and a little bit scratchy, it's time to, you know, focus on the nuts and the fish again. And I do, and then they smooth out within a few weeks. Now oily fish are far and away the most potent form of omega-3 fats, but if you don't want to eat oily fish or you're eating plant-based, for example, you can also find omega-3 fats in things like chia seeds and flax seeds and also the walnuts. Now my skin's hydration may also be related to taking collagen peptides. So collagen supplements are weirdly controversial. There is evidence to show that they work so they can boost hydration and reduce fine lines and wrinkles. But the trouble is a lot of the research is funded by the people who are making the collagen. So people are understandably skeptical. But I've had a few clients who swear by it. So I decided to give it a go too. And I have to say, I agree. I think it makes a difference. I've noticed my skin is just that little bit plumper and also more even textured and more hydrated. And my nails are stronger too. Now, this is the one I'm using at the moment and I've tried a few at this point. I'm always just looking for two things in any collagen product. The first one is that it contains type one collagen peptides. There are over 28 known types of collagen, but type one is the type that feeds your skin the most. And I prefer taking it as peptides, which is sometimes known as hydrolyzed collagen because that's the type that has been shown to be easily absorbed and actually reach your skin. The second thing I'm looking for in a collagen product is that it needs to give me a dose of two and a half to five grams a day pretty easily because that is the dose that has been shown to work in the research and this one gives you that in about a tablespoon. Now this one is flavoured, it's like a, it's a natural strawberry flavour which is quite nice if you're stirring it into water but I think next time I'd actually get a plain one again because I like the versatility of being able to add collagen to coffee or to other foods. So to sum up, these are the skincare habits that have genuinely changed my skin for the better. This isn't all that I do for my skin, but I've chosen these habits because they all have a lot of evidence behind them, which means they are likely to work for you too. This is genuinely how I view skincare. It is what you put on your skin, but it's also how you build your skin from the inside out. And I would say since making this mental shift, my skin has never been better.
Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, you might like another video I've done on how to eat for great skin, which I will link here. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I will see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare.